preached an in season and out of season and preach and that'll be worth it all. Turn your Bible to the book of Ephesians. That's my favorite book. Chapter 1. I want to preach this afternoon, if the Lord's help, on the treasures of knowledge. God gives us knowledge. We're going into a brand new year and we'll need a lot of knowledge. And that song about he's precious and surely he is precious to me. And the more you learn about him, the more precious he'll be to you. And the more that we study and the more we learn about what he's prepared for us, the more precious he becomes. So let's stand in reference to God's holy word. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to begin reading in verse 15. Prayer for knowledge and power as Paul sent the letter to the church at Ephesus which is called the book of Ephesians and he talked about the sovereign powerful God in this chapter. Chapter 1 he talked about God the Father in verse 3. Blessed be God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us and Lord God we've been blessed Amen. abundantly. He talked about the Son and how the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, His grace, wherein He's made us acceptable unto the beloved. And He talked about the Spirit in verse 13, how the Holy Ghost has sealed us. I've been, I've been sealed by the power of God. All the demon forces of hell can't take away my salvation. I'm secure in the ways of the Lord. In verse 15, He said, Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Now the verse I'm going to preach from is verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Now isn't that a, isn't that a verse for the Lord God of our of the Lord? Our God of our Lord, Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in knowledge of him. Now that's what I want to get to, is knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. We want to enlighten your understanding tonight. Nothing I've done, nothing we've done in the church is what he has done, the Lord Jesus Christ. That you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of his glory for his inheritance in the saints. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. I'm glad the grave couldn't hold him and the devil couldn't hold him down and he resurrected and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Lord Jesus is now seated in the Father at the right hand of the Father. Above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and has put all things under his feet and give him to be the head over all things to the church, Amen. which is the body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Amen. Lord God, our heavenly Amen. Father, I do thank you tonight, God, that, that you love me enough to break open the jailhouse doors of hell and shake up hell and deliver me out of the bondage of sin. I'm thankful, God, that you broke the chains of old dead when death had a hold of me and I was dead in trespasses and sin. Thank God the Holy Ghost 
like wisdom, let him ask. Now, and it's a, a faith that we have in God that he'll give us wisdom. And then he said in the book of Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so the Bible has a lot to say about wisdom. But I looked up the word knowledge, and knowledge is an understanding gained by experience. And I thought that's about the best definition I've ever heard for knowledge. It's an understanding gained by experience. I thank God for all the experience that I've gone through. I come out stronger on the other side. Thank God for every valley that I've gone through. And God reached down in the valley and he's carried me out of the valley over on the other shore. Thank God for every storm that I've been in. Every time I've been through a storm, brother, I gain knowledge of my experience of being in that storm. You can't tell a person how bad a tornado is until they've been right in the middle of that tornado and they've seen the wind blowing or seen the effects of the wind and they've seen the damage. You can't tell a person how bad it is. Maybe have a broken bone in your body until you have experienced that. And so knowledge is something that we understand by gaining by experience. And then wisdom, and I, I like this, wisdom is intelligence. It's an intelligent application of knowledge. So we gain knowledge by experience, understanding by experience, and then wisdom is to take that intelligence that we have and make applications of the knowledge. In other words, use the knowledge that you've gained and it'll become wisdom. Every experience that you've gone through, I want you to know God's got a purpose for it. Sometimes we try to figure it out. Sometimes we try to do this or do that. But I want you to know there's not been one thing that's ever happened on the face of this earth that God didn't already know about before the very foundation of the world. Every jot, every tittle, God already knows about it. So far you and I are worrying about it. He's already got a saved in heaven. He's got enough blood in heaven.
understand and gain by experience. Right. Suppose you never been through none of those experiences. You wouldn't have knowledge. Brother, I gained some knowledge just growing up from my daddy. Yeah. My daddy put me in some hard spots sometimes, especially when he got that old breast room now and give me a good pricing with that breast room. Brother, I got experience. The night that he came in or the day he came in and had a pack of home runs, you probably don't know what home runs are, but home runs were about as strong as you could get in tobacco at that time. I mean, it knocked the top of your head off. And I was about 11 or 12 years old, and I'd been slipping around in the back of the fields and sending up in cents, and I was a smoking and a puffing, and I didn't thank God uh, that Daddy knew about it, but he did. And he brought that pack of home runs home, and he said, Son, how about a cigarette? I thought, Lord God, I, I've arrived. I'm grown up. And I wasn't but 11 years old, and he gave me one, and boy, I ride back. We had an old cement porch out back, and I ride back on that porch. I let me up on them home runs, and he said, You heard it, son. And boy, it was tough getting her down, but I got it in my lungs, and I rolled around a little bit, and I puffed around. Boy, I thought I was a big shot. I puffed on that thing, and I, you know how they flip them, and I flipped them. Just flipped her out in the yard and ride right back. He said, Have another. I said, Daddy, I don't believe I want to. I mean, that person like to kill me. He said, I said, have another. I said, yes, sir, I believe I will. I had myself another one, and I inhaled every draw of it. And when I got through, I flipped around, and he said, have another. I said, Daddy, two in a row is about all I can stand. He said, I said, have another one. I said, yes, sir. I had myself another one. And I sat there till all 20 was thrown out of that pack, and he twisted her up. He had a bad habit of smoking Lucky Strike, and he twisted her up, and he threw that pack of home runs out there empty, and I had all the smoke from 20 tobaccos of home runs down in my lungs, and I was green and purple and orange, and I mean, I was sick as a dog. I, I couldn't walk. My legs were wobbly, and I couldn't hardly make it. I said, Daddy, I've had all I can stand. I, I don't believe I want another one. He said, that's good. Come on. I, I got something else for you. We went out behind the old shed out there, and he pulled out the fresh broom that had already been wore out. I mean, didn't have a leaf on it. You know what I'm talking about? He had wore it out on the yard, and he got a hold of my back. I mean, he struck my back. I had blood running down my backbone because he whipped me so hard for sending up in trims. That's knowledge. I gained knowledge that day about what back it would do for you. And I will never forget it as long as I live. I'll never forget what it done to my lungs. That's knowledge. You know what I'm talking about. Come on, man. I'm not fussing about you smoking. If you want to smoke, you go ahead and help yourself. If you ever get a hold, God ever gets a hold with a brush broom, oh, it may change your mind. If you want to smoke, you go ahead and that don't bother me. I got my lungs clear of it. But I'm talking about treasures of knowledge by experience. And there's some places and some things God's going to put you in. That's the only way he can teach you anything is getting you to that spot where it looks like all hell broke loose. It looks like you're down as far as you can go. It looks like, hey, this is it. And about the time you say, this is far down as I can go, God, that's where God wants you. And then he reaches down and he gets you up and he sets you back on the solid rock. And he says, now, nah, son, you've gained some experience. Yeah, hey. Don't think you're over with it because next book you may have another one. Just because you got through one valley, that don't mean you're not going to have another one. There'll be another one just around the corner. He's talking about fixing problems around a church. You get one light fixed and there's another light messed up. You get one over here fixed and there's something else. So uh, there's always something uh, to maintain around the house of God or around your home. And so it is in Christian life. There's just one problem right after the other problem. Just go ahead, stay with God, and it'll be all right. Amen. Now let me give you the treasures of knowledge. Number one, there's knowledge of God's law. Turn to Romans chapter 3 and in verse 20. Now I want to read one or two scriptures if you don't mind if I do that. Already asked the Lord about it anyway, so if you mind, we just talk it up to the Lord. 
Romans chapter 3 and verse 20. Knowledge of God's law is going to bring some things in your life. Now, you didn't, you didn't understand this when you was lost and undone, but God had to bring you to this place by experience to get you to the place he wanted you. Now, look what he said. Romans chapter 3, you'll know Romans 1, 2, and 3 deals with sin, corruptness, and even God turned some of them over to a reprobate mind because they had defiled the laws of God. Look in verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. By conduct, it's not by law that we are saved. It's not by law that we are kept. But there is a purpose for the laws of God. And that is to bring wisdom and knowledge to you and I. And he said, uh, not of the flesh be justified in sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So underline that knowledge of sin. So the knowledge of God's laws brings conviction. Now put that down. Brings conviction. <clears throat> Only when you come to the place of the knowledge of the laws of God that you will be saved and born in the family of God. Brother, you had to come first of all to realize the laws, the standards of God is set forth in the word of God. Nobody's ever been saved outside of conviction under the laws of God. The man preaches the word of God. The Holy Ghost of God takes the word that the man of God preaches and it brings the laws into the heart of mankind. And it's my experience that God brings knowledge to your heart. The only way that I know I'm passed from death from the high, the only way I know that I was convicted is by the knowledge of experience that I had. I don't know what you had. I don't know what you've gone through. I don't know what you may have. But I do know when the Holy Ghost of God entered into my soul and I was convicted, brother, that was the knowledge of experience of knowing that God reached down and touched me. That's why I shout so much. That's why I have such a good time.
chapter 1. Knowledge of God's Son. Boy, I like these. It's a precious, precious thing that we sing about, a precious person we sing about in Second Peter chapter 1, verses 2, 3, and 8. You will find this mentioned. Chapter 1, verse 2 of Second Peter. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ. Boy, that good. Knowledge of God's Son that bringeth forth salvation. It was a knowledge of a law that bringeth forth conviction. It was a knowledge of a truth that bringeth forth faith. And it was a knowledge of God's Son that bringeth forth salvation. But I found out about Jesus. You see, we had to go down the Roman road for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's conviction. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But thank God that God commended His love toward us. And in while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah.
Thank God. When you get those scriptures that God put down in the Word, so you'll know you're right on track. Otherwise, you'll be defeated and discouraged all the time. You'll be down. You won't know which way to go. That's why I don't like to make a move until God sort of puts it in my heart and puts me on the right track so I'll know when I have to stand in the paddle and hold up the word of God and say, Lord, come. I've got knowledge on the will of God because it's the word of God. And we can stand and say, thank God I'm saved. And in the will of God. Brother, it's going to take some experience. People want to sit idly by. We're living in some days today when people don't want to get too involved in the work of God. That's right. They want to get involved in religion right. and tradition, but they don't want to get too involved in the things of God. You know why we're here? We're here to worship God, lift up holy hands and praise Him and bless His holy name and to win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the will of God for the church is to win souls. Yeah. Why well, not on doors and win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Well, they give you knowledge of God's will. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11. Knowledge of God's judgment brings forth compassion. Chastisement will come your way. The very best you can do, there's going to be a time that you're going to be chastened. God's going to give you a whipping. If he didn't give you one last year, he may give you one this year. Sooner or later, you're going to get a whipping down the road somewhere. Chastisement. Well, by experience, you will know. Yeah. <coughs> Tom Southern, come up here and preach a while. 